What's up guys, Jason here, Morph Mixology Reptiles. Welcome back to the channel and my kitchen, I guess. Um, this is really the only spot I've got available at the moment to do some a quick little intro here because the garage is packed full, the snake room is in the process of being framed up, so it's very busy and this is, this is like the only free spot I've got at the moment. So uh, this video, I just want to intro really quick well before all of this ridiculous COVID garbage and masks and social distancing and no travel and everything else, you guys remember back in the beginning of the year, it seems like ages ago now, uh, myself and my buddy Brian McCourt from Sailor Serpents headed out to Pittsburgh, PA, to visit our buddy Garrett Hartle, the one and only, and play with some super dwarves. If you've not seen any of the videos from that trip and the cool stuff we got to do, I'll link a few up here and some more in the description. Check out those, it's a lot of fun, it's a great trip. Garrett's a, a great friend of mine and it's always fun in his place. But we sat down and the three of us, Garrett and Brian and I sat down and we kind of just had like a, an open forum discussion on a lot of different stuff as far as the hobby goes. Uh, social media, YouTube, selling, breeders, the whole nine yards. So I gotta first put in a really quick thank you to Aiden, uh, Garrett's employee. And I'll link Aiden's stuff down below as well. Uh, rat, something rat got, I'll put it all down there. Um, and you should see it right here at the moment. Super nice kid, really helpful. And because we are so slammed at home and running out of time rapidly before Baby Mixology shows up, uh, Aiden is editing that entire discussion and we sat there for probably two hours and, and went back and forth over a bunch of topics. So I'm just doing a quick little intro here. Aiden's putting it with the rest of the videos and that, breaking them up. And we're gonna go back and forth week to week between our channel and Garrett Hartle's channel, Reach Out Reptiles, and do a section here. And then the next week will be a section there and so on and so forth. So that's what this is all about. Uh, in all honesty, you should be able to minimize it and just listen if you want. It's more like a podcast style than it is a, a video. There's nothing really to look at um, unless you want to look at us for whatever reason. But uh, there will be some, I guess Aiden's doing some uh, editing with B-roll and stuff to put uh, pictures of different animals we discuss and stuff like that in. So it might be kind of fun to watch. Um, I've not obviously seen it yet at the time of recording this intro. So it'll be exciting for me uh, to see how it turned out. But that's what we're doing here. It's gonna be a really fun little video and we will just kind of discuss some of the stuff in the hobby. It's really interesting to get Garrett's perspective as somebody who's been doing this a long time and with a very niche specialized uh, species. Me, who's kind of the DIY up and coming YouTuber kind of thing, uh, you know, two years in the whole nine yards. And then Brian's perspective is a total new uh, outsider looking in kind of thing. So. It's a lot of fun. I really appreciate the time we got to sit down and talk with those guys. And so it'll be starting here on our channel. And next week, head over to Reach Out Reptiles. I'll put his info up here and in the description as well. And we, uh, you can watch the rest of it over there. It should be probably three, four, or five parts maybe. So this might be a few weeks back and forth between Garrett and I on our channel. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Stay tuned, obviously. We've got tons of stuff coming with the new snake room and you know that kind of stuff breeding's on its way many clutches to come so it's really stupid busy over here but i thought this would be kind of good time with for us and that to just do a couple of little videos back and forth with garrett and brian hope you enjoy it all right everybody welcome back to reach out reptiles my name is garrett hartle and on, this week no, we have no we're on morph on uh, morph mixology's channel welcome back to the channel jason here morph mixology not in my snake room Who's we'll this just, guy? We'll just see about that. I don't have a YouTube, uh, so I'm just here hanging out. <laughs> Brian, so, Brian's here to finish my wife's tattoos. But, there you go. Except yeah. she's not. Didn't uh, didn't do any filming of this, but Brian Red Rose, Red Rose Tattoo in Ohio. Look it up. This is going to be kind of a totally different format than either of us have ever done on our channels. We just figured it'd be kind of fun to rap, almost a little bit podcast style, eh? I'm entirely too white to rap. About, <laughs> I heard some, there's some good right, white rappers out there. My boy g Easy, what's up? <laughs> Shout out if you're watching. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna get in here and talk about some of the, our experiences within the reptile industry. 
So maybe looking ahead, looking behind, you can kind of remember, relate that sort of stuff. We figure we would run for a while uh, until we run out of steam on a topic, switch topics, switch channels, and bounce back and forth a little bit. So It's probably going to be a lot of me as a young new breeder bitching about how screwed up the market and hobby is, and Garrett as the old guy. He's like grandpa around here, so he's saying you silly millennial. Yeah. Back in my day, Back we had to do that with day. no shoes uphill both ways. <laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs> For those that are coming from either channel or the middle of nowhere, welcome to YouTube. This will be my second year, second season breeding ball pythons exclusively. Uh, might have a clut or a litter of doomerals bows. Not sure if she's grabbing or not, but really? we'll see how that goes. I didn't even know you had two of them. Yep. Um, fairly new. The channel was deathly afraid of snakes to begin with. And my side of the channel is very DIY heavy, basement breeder, you know, figuring it out on the fly. Garrett, on the other hand, is... No, I did the same thing. It was just the year ago. was 1989. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Literally before I was born. So, no, we, yeah, we did all that kind of stuff. And um, I've been working with the species that I do for 20 years. But that's kind of a generous... Like, I haven't been commercially breeding dwarf and, and super dwarf retics for 20 years. But um, I've been doing it for a long time now. So I started this business five years ago and I had already had a, a decent number of breeding success under my sleeve, so. And then Brian is just getting started. Well, I'm the, the newest newbie here. I started buying snakes in May of last year. Um, and since then I, I've got, what did I say, 18? I've got 18 ball pythons now. Um, I'll have two pairings this year hopefully two clutches this year. And then I've got uh, two split clutches I'm doing with Jason, so I'm looking forward to that for sure. And a shopping list of retics he doesn't know about yet. Oh, I just I saw your it. first snake eggs in the flesh today, you were saying. Yep. We um, actually pulled the, uh, this was our second Carampa clutch, so and second ever for the US. And I feel like we that's- We just pulled the eggs today. Pretty, pretty impressive first clutch to see. If, if, there, <laughs> if there was a first Fairly clutch exclusive. to ever see, it's that one. Yeah, I saw my first Karampa clutch, gosh, way back three months ago. Jason always calls me to complain about everybody in the industry. So I That's said, you sound, like you, have, <laughs> you sound like you have some pent up aggression. We need to maybe have like a clear the air session with the reptile industry and work all this kind of stuff out. Like when I grew up, everybody just, we were mostly collectors and everyone kind of fell into breeding once they kept enough of a certain species. It just accidentally happened. I mean, for me, it was intentional, like with leopard geckos, but um, yeah, there wasn't like a, a whole lot outside of that. So there was no formula or anything. Now there's the formula. You were joking around about people saying, "Oh, just because you have the YouTube channel and a sticker and a and a T-shirt, you know, you think you're better than the the other breeder that doesn't have that or whatever." Now you're a pro. Yeah, and so and I don't even know that that's a reptile formula because it seems like every kid out there is running around with a camera personally branding themselves with a sticker and a t-shirt and it just kind of came into the reptile industry you said this is your second season but how long has the youtube channel been going uh about a year and a half i guess he's I rap rapidly approaching our subscribership and soon to pass us because i actually think it'll we be, don't post enough videos i think it'll be two years in april i mean at the time of filming that's like i've got five more to go until ten thousand. so Woo. that's a huge accomplishment and Obviously a, a big thank you. To answer your question about the YouTube thing, I think it's been it's been good for business, I guess, being able to put your your process and your animals and whatnot and build that hype, you know, pulling the clutch and doing a video, either cutting or revealing a new clutch, or in whatever the case may be, you build the hype around the animals. There's no denying that that has generally a positive impact on overall sales. Okay. That's fairly, I mean, that's fairly easy to, to quantify. Um, it does seem like in a 2020 Facebook world that being a young, new, fairly juvenile breeder or inexperienced breeder and having, having a YouTube channel, like you said, a YouTube channel sticker and a t-shirt, there's a lot of people that just want to cut you down because you're acting like you know what you're talking about because you've got a channel. I mean, I think more than anything, that's them being jealous and pissed that somebody can come on the scene. You know, they could be in the game for 15 years and I've been doing this my entire life. And then some kid comes on the scene 
and makes a splash and hits you know hits the market at the right time or makes the right kind of niche in videos whatever the case may be i think a perfect example of this is miguel and always evolving pythons he grew notoriety and fame if you want to call it that a youtube celebrity so to speak in a very short amount of time and i'm Dude, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's great for him. I'm super stoked. He's making badass animals, and he's able to move them. I mean, his stuff's flying off the shelves. Yep. And I'm not going to fault him for that. But I think the reason why having a YouTube following helps you sell snakes more is because we live in a world where you're buying stuff online, and people feel like they want to trust you. Fair. So now they can go online on your YouTube channel and feel like they learn about you because they've seen a little bit about your process, your personal life. Uh, all that kind of stuff, and, and they, you know, they feel like they get a sense like, oh, this guy's down to earth, trustworthy. They're confident uh, in the purchase from you, you know, kind of thing. Right. So, you know, you feel like you know that guy. Like, uh, it's funny, but a lot of people's first purchase online with reptiles are some of the biggest names in the industry. Yeah. How many people's first? Raise your hand in the comment section if your first purchase was from like Brian Barcheck at BHP or something like that. There's tons of people that are like that. Yes, yeah. you know. My second and third ones were. Yeah. Yep. See, there you go. And he's never produced Superdorf, so yeah. and my one, zero for me. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> and my my first or my second snake came from Justin. Yep. You know, the same there thing. you go. Justin Kabilka, for example, uh, I think has great marketing and stuff. I mean, that is his background. But he'll show off like a flagship type snake. Like, check it out. The coolest new morph of 2020. Here it is. I worked this long on doing it. I put all these ingredients together here is the snake and we feel like wow he must have produced a thousand of those and pushed them all off the shelves at twenty thousand dollars each or whatever and that's usually not the case usually that snake is sitting at his booth every show <laughs> for the whole year and maybe somebody buys it eventually yeah but the thing is for every five gene snake he shows that cost twenty thousand dollars it's like carefully crafted he's going to sell every single gene that's a component of that snake because of that snake in that video to a bunch of first timers that are like batman i like that you well, know what i mean now i need to buy a spot nose and or people, whatever the case may be yeah and people like that benefit all of the rest of us too because you take for instance the the magma project the pompeys and that that came out uh last year and the year prior when the magma hit hit the ground which was the red stripe clown and then he put the Pompeii in behind it, which had a whole bunch of other stuff, but he didn't tell anybody what it was. But he identified that Red Stripe and Clown were the base of that entire project. Everybody, project. everybody was banging down people's doors trying to buy their Red Stripes for two and three times what they were quote unquote worth. Justin's working with another gene called Redhead and he's putting it in a bunch of stuff. And he posted a picture a while back of a Redhead something or other breeding desert ghost, whatever, you know, something crazy, making combos, whatever. And now you're seeing the five people in the country that have redheads in their collection mm. are listing them at astronomical prices because Justin did it. It's kind of a catch-22 because it prices out a lot of people sometimes because then they start raising their prices. But that means any of us that are happen to bre be breeding red stripe or redhead or GHI or whatever the flavor of the month is for him, all of us have a better chance of getting a move too. Right. So I think the same things happen with like say pure locality super dwarves for example. You know what I mean? You know I used to sell those things for 300 bucks a piece. You know now I think it's a waiting list is like a year long and you're gonna pay three grand in some cases. Um, and as they're popularized, the people that have them put higher price tags. So you have all these other people putting higher price tags, and it's the opposite of what generally happens in the market where everyone's undercutting each other. Now they're like overcutting each other with an underappreciated animal yeah. and the the market just back to to probably where it should have been all along yeah. people just didn't see the potential of it until somebody got up and explained that stuff so that is a good way that really any of us can benefit from the market that's what but, i was just gonna ask do you think that's something that's more beneficial to you obviously because you are, like say you already have a lot of these things and the market price goes up you know when you go to sell them the price also goes up but for people who like actually like those snakes and want to buy those snakes but maybe can't it's not so good for them so i guess it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword you know maybe but they could have bought it when they were 400 right. dollars, exactly. and they didn't yeah. until everybody that's liked having it. that vision so if you like everything that's popular and new then you know pay to play like you said what's unique about you know using justin kabilka as an example again is that he has crafted his entire market 
off of underappreciated jeans. Yeah. Look at some of his most popular stuff are made with jeans. In some cases, I mean, Clown was one of the original ball python morphs. It's been around since the very beginning. You know, I mean, I remember seeing the the clown, and I think originally they thought it wasn't genetic in some reptiles magazines back in the 90s. You know what I mean? Maybe it was late 2000s. Comment below if you know when the first clown ball python, but they had the thing around forever. It had the little teardrop under its eye. Yep. That's why they named it Clown. I think it was VPI that had them back then. But anyway, and then adding something like Spot Nose, which I was selling Spot Nose over at Prehistoric Pets for like 350 bucks each. Uh, and this was 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Uh, Leopard has been around. It wasn't even thought to be a gene for a long time. It was like a het pied marker in the beginning. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. taking those underappreciated genes and painstakingly put a bunch of $200 snakes together or whatever to make something truly spectacular when everyone else was like, banana! The reptile industry is a niche industry. Yeah. So I think what a lot of people don't realize is that intentionally or not, the actions that they're taking uh, are having a, can potentially have a, a ripple effect and a big, a big effect in the industry. So even though those of you guys that are watching, the people you support in the industry today are still going to be here tomorrow so make sure you're buying snakes from them or they're going to cease to exist you know they're going to go back to a normal day job and you won't know them anymore yeah you know and and it's kind of one of those like step up and take responsibility for your actions you know what i mean like so when i did the super dwarves i liked those the best it's not because they were the most popular i had some kind of insider information that they were going to be the most popular or whatever the the case may be but I just liked them the best. And I thought that ball python people would like them too. Because they're a ball python sized snake that never gets sick and it always eats and it has like a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. You know, like curiosity or whatever. So, I mean, you guys are both ball python people and you travel here to Pittsburgh to see super dwarfs. Yeah. You didn't come for my ball pythons, mm -hmm. you true. know? So I never like, never handled any sort of reticulated python up until today and they How'd were- How'd it go? It, it was awesome. They're actually like super enjoyable, and in my opinion, which will probably be a little controversial, but I think Brand. they're, I think they're a little more fun to like handle and stuff than ball pythons are. They're just like more active and uh, engaging, I guess. How about the size? Everybody always complains that I don't show enough of the adults. What do you think right. about the, the sizes? Even the 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 one like I'm not gonna say big, but bigger male that I held was. The Pure Slayer, yeah, he, which is the largest dwarf locality. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which yeah. was also kind of mind-boggling to me, just because when you think of reticulated pythons, you think you know you're looking at 15-foot-long snakes, and then you come in here and you put your hand out, and it's just you know a little bit bigger than the circumference of your hand, and you're like, that's crazy. Yeah, mind-blowing. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean, you talk about the the, the reach and the scope of having an Instagram and a YouTube and, and a name and whatnot, I would have never known who you are or to come out here and learn about Super Dwarfs had it not been through your channel and through Brian Cusco's channel and stuff like that. I mean, YouTube is what brought me here last year right? for the first time. And then YouTube is what brought him to me. For me originally, how everyone knew me was either because I was the guy that buy, was buying their snakes or that sold a certain kind of snake to them or you know, later in life, a lot of people that feel like they've known me for a long time knew me from Prehistoric, which I started working there in like 2009, so about 10 years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, But I had been doing a lot of stuff before then. Um, so, you know, and that was all like word of mouth. The people who knew me at Prehistoric probably was YouTube again, but it was much more in its infancy back then. I don't know if you realize it or not, but I would say you introducing yourself on YouTube is what's giving you the advantage in sales there. Just yeah. makes the snakes are great, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like, take the, uh, any TV, like reality TV show, Duck Dynasty, right? Do you watch it because you're a duck hunter? No, I mean, it was like the most popular show right. on TV for a long time, and nobody hunts ducks, you know what I mean? Like, uh, two of you do can comment below and tell me I'm stupid. <laughs> but, but half of my subscribers probably have one of their duck calls. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, but the, but the point is, like, 
you you go there and you're like, what's this guy like stepping out of a limo and camouflage and talking yeah. about duck hunting? But he's rich, so the money and then the hick side of it, the redneck side of it, are the hook. And then you end up falling in love with the characters and watching them and be like, I want to meet those guys someday, yay! And that's what that's what we're doing. So it's like, oh, how big does a super dwarf get? You know, and you you type that up, and my video pops up, and you watch it, and then you binge watch a bunch of them, and the next thing you know, you're here in my basement in Pittsburgh. Usually building stuff free. Usually. I didn't watch any videos. I watched them here and there, but I wish before coming here I would have watched more of them. <laughs> he, he was dragged by the ear from Jason, like, no, no, you gotta see, you gotta see. <laughs> No, I did want to see. I did want to see it on my own accord. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's going to be the end of this part of this little... Yeah, it seems like a natural place to cut it. Yeah, powwow that we're uh, doing here. It's actually it's, it's fun, but we've got plenty more. Okay, I have plenty more to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the end of this part. Next part will be coming up soon, and it'll be over on Garrett's channel, Reach Out Reptiles. I'll put his description down below. And if Brian ever decides to buy a camera, then we'll, maybe we'll put his channel out there somewhere too. <laughs> so you need to check out his Instagram and his cool tattoos. Yeah, stuff. Brian, Brian Redrose, all the inf everybody, you know, like like Miguel always says, all that stuff, it's all down below. Like so. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little back and forth, the beginning of the forum, so to speak, uh, between myself, Garrett, and Brian and uh, kind of getting a little bit of discussion going on some of the topics in the in the hobby that's uh, been on my mind things that i want to talk to garrett about and get brian's perspective as a newcomer so uh, that does it for part one here on morph mixology part two will be next week over on garrett's channel reach out reptiles right here link down below as always i'm sure you're already subscribed to him if you're subscribed to me so head over there make sure you're subscribed on his channel as well part two and then we'll be back for part three after that i uh, really appreciate the time that garrett and brian sat down with me and i appreciate your guys time for sitting down and watching i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys in the next video see it